Hi, my name is Anne McElhenney. And my name is Phil McAleer. And welcome to the Anne and Phil Scoop. Yes. Well, uh, the show today is basically all about all about the bass. Um, it's My Son Hunter is coming out in one week's time. One week. Time. One week from today. So you go to mysonhunter.com. We're partnering with Breitbart. Uh, it's you, here's have a look at some of the media we're getting huge uh, amazing uh, it's trended on twitter last weekend by the way the last time i looked film the last time i looked there were and i and by the time you see this it'll be even more the last time i looked film there was three and a half million people had watched the trailer three and a half million Let, let's play the trailer we're gonna play it a couple of times during this show but let's play it now so i'll tell you what's going down you know who i am they told me you were vip well connected to the government. What kind of a moron forgets to pick up his laptop at a repair shop? You're a Biden. Act like one. Everything he built, life, I just ruined it all. I want to know everything that's on that laptop that can ruin my erection. My friends, it's time to party! Didn't you know? I'm taking control. I'm making appearance and I gotta go. Cause I get them dancing with their hands up. Yeah, I walk in and they go bananas. I'm a bad guy. I'm an artist. Tell me how I can help you. Well, I don't deserve help. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been through worse. You're the smartest man I know. Thanks, Dad. I just wish I could smack some sense into you. I'll never forget Corey Bob. He was a bad dude. No joke. Dad, we were talking about suffering. No. I can't seem to find anything but positive stuff on the Bidens. Who's the point then for the foreign policy in the Obama regime? Joe Biden. So it looks like you need a billion dollars. So the obvious next question is, where's Hunter? I can remember getting paid some money, but I can't remember what for. Well, my dad says we never discuss my businesses, period. Or my cut. What's happening in there? Joe's in on it. Party's over! You had everything, Hunter, and you threw it all away. You hope the laptop will take down everybody with you. Get out! China's not our enemy. They're not bad folks, folks. I love my dad, and I just want to make him proud. I am the one who brings in all the deals. I am the one. The boy. So we're getting a lot of very nice comments about yes. the trailer. I think people are sort of realizing that this is a real movie. Uh, I think sometimes I said this to you last week, Phil, and I think like a lot of times conservatives think when you say the word movie, they think it's a documentary. So as you can, as you noticed, this is not a documentary. This is a movie movie with amazing Robert Davi directing. And we're going to talk to Robert Davi. Phil's going to talk to Robert Davi uh, in a few minutes yes. uh, to talk more about the movie. But honestly, we were so lucky to have Robert Davi direct this movie. We're yeah. so happy to have Lawrence Fox, to have Gina Carano, John to have James. John James we just love John James and we loved all the lovely comments last week about John James he's just a sweetheart um, we were it was such a great cast a great yes. ensemble they loved in each Serbia. other in Serbia you know I mean and we were all in this one hotel together right. I mean you know because we were we were updating you all the time but honestly it's been it's, it feels like a long time but honestly for a movie this is pr pretty fast and I want to say way. we couldn't have done it without you because no. you are podcast listeners crowdfunded this movie you guys just like you crowdfunded the Gosnell movie you crowdfunded our plays all our events yeah all otherwise this is a, this is us making this is us making the difference in the culture you know Andrew Breitbart and it's, it's something very beautiful for us about obviously partnering with Breitbart because of Andrew we're living here because of Andrew and Andrew talked as you all know the famous quote he said that politics was downstream from culture a lot of people I don't know if they really know what that means because culture is you know dominated by the left and uh, you know, here we are making this making this real movie. This is a real classic Hollywood movie with, you know, it's beautiful to look at. The actors are extraordinary. And obviously the story is Amazing. extraordinary. So, tell us you can't, how... as they say, you couldn't make it up. You yes. like, you couldn't make no, it up. No, truth is strange. Tell us again, Anne, how can people get their hands on this movie? So people need to go to mysonhunter.com, mysonhunter.com. And one thing that we've been hearing about, I think I mentioned it last week, but one, one thing that people are doing is they're going to they're gonna get it like on Wednesday. So that's going to be on no, Wednesday. No, no, no. Uh, so gonna... people can go to mysonhunter.com, by the way, but you can pre-order it. Oh, don't yeah, forget. get it now. Get exactly. it now. Exactly. That's yeah, actually the now. better idea. Yeah, so get it right so now. So when we say don't go next Wednesday, it's going to become live 
for a, it's going to become available next Wednesday. But please go now and pre-order. Uh, and then what you could do is like you next could invite, Wednesday ne- on next Wednesday, and you could invite in some of the neighbors. Like you could have people over because I think I think it's the kind of thing that you'd enjoy watching with other people actually. Um, and anyway, whatever way you decide to do it. By the way, please send us photographs because we just had. I heard, who did I hear from? We heard from people in Serbia. And uh, thank you, the guys in Serbia who wrote to us and said that they're going to have a screening in Serbia. They're going to have their friends over to their house and watch it together. So um, we're encouraging. We're encouraging all of that okay well so listen let's go now to the interview with robert davi uh, i did it earlier let's go over to that interview now so we're joined now by robert davi um you may know him he's an actor uh director Anne and i first i think met robert davi when he was uh doing a uh singing frank sinatra songs in a in an in a underground bar in new york just just right before the pandemic actually um uh, if you ever get to see off topic here, if you ever get to see this guy sing, don't don't lose that opportunity. Don't miss that opportunity. But I want to talk about what we want to talk about here today. So Robert, of course, is known as an actor and filmmaker. Uh, he's the director of My Son Hunter. Welcome to the show, Robert. It's great to be here with you, Philem. Once again, seeing you and Anne, and so wonderful being here. I have to say, but I have to correct you with one thing, my dear friend. Okay, go ahead. Birdland happens to be one of the premier jazz clubs in New York City. It's a legendary jazz club. Interesting. Ma- ma- uh, ma- uh, named after Charlie, Charlie Parker, uh, the bird. And it's a, it's a, you know, it's a premiere. They don't put any acts in that. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Look, um, jazz clubs are not my area of expertise. All I saw was we were in New York, very busy. We, uh, we were doing a very high, t- high pressure project. And we just saw that Robert Davi was playing at, at this uh, well, it has the atmosphere of a speakeasy underground jazz yes. club. It's kind of a low ceiling, and you're at your table, and you know it, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. And I really appreciated you both coming to that. I was very touched when I when I was told later on, a year later, I think yeah. it was, yeah, that yeah. you were at that concert. Well, then, yeah, a year later, or uh, yeah, that was right before. Was that the last concert you did before the pandemic? The last one I did b- just before pandemic was in Paris at the Eiffel Tower. They closed it down, and I did a concert for fifty people. Wow! For uh, Diane van Furstenberg and Jeff Bezos, who were there, she got the Legion of Honor. Wow! So that was the last one. I mean, so let's talk about what we want to talk about. I suppose um, we could talk. I could talk all day to you. My son Hunter. Uh, it's coming out in one week's time. Uh, when people see this, they'll see it. And it'll be one week's time. September 7th. Put a big circle around your date book, around your, on your phone. Get alerts on your phone, on your computer, on any calendar section you have. September 7th is, let's say, F day, film day, or B day, Biden day. So you may not have known this, uh, Robert, but over the weekend, uh, my son Hunter trended on Twitter. Did you see that? I did. I didn't see that it trended, but I, 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 people were telling me, hey, man, my son Hunter's yeah. trending on Twitter. I says, oh, darn, yeah. that's, so, that's great. Yeah. Actually, let, let's, just, um, let's just play the trailer now, actually, so people can get a, a sense of, of the movie. So I'll tell you what's going down. Do you know who I am? They told me you were VIP, well connected to the government. What kind of a moron forgets to pick up his laptop at a repair shop? You're a Biden. Act like one. Everything he built, life, I just ruined it all. I want to know everything that's on that laptop that can ruin my erection. My friends, it's time to party! I'm an artist. Tell me how I can help you. Well, I don't deserve help. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been through worse. You're the smartest man I know. Thanks, Dad. I just wish I could speak some sense into you. I'll never forget Cory Pop. He was a bad dude. No joke. Dad, we were talking about suffering. I can't seem to find anything but positive stuff on the Bidens. Who's the point pen for the foreign policy in the Obama regime? Joe Biden. So it looks like you need a billion dollars. So the obvious next question is, where's Hunter? I can remember getting paid some money, but I can't remember what for. Well, my dad says we never discuss my businesses, period. Or my cut. What's happening in there? 
Joe's in on it. Party's over! <laughs> you had everything, Hunter, and you threw it all away. You hope the laptop will take down everybody with you. Get out! China's not our enemy. They're not bad folks, folks. I love my dad, and I just want to make him proud. I am the one who brings in all the deals. I am the one. The boy. Try, try and sum up the movie for people who don't know anything about Hunter Biden, who don't know anything about the movie tell us what you were what was your intention when you took this project on what did you want to do well first off the initial thing is when the script came to me from uh, and recommended by i guess magda uh, you guys told me and, yes and then uh, you and ann and everybody agreed with that the, the script that the story you worked on with brian Godswa and the, the screenplay and i read the script and I, the story had been brewing in me because, of course, the, the whole nation, the whole world was looking at this Hunter Biden story being buried, as we know, by the FBI mm -hmm. and everyone else. So there was already a fermented kind of passion to tell that story that was brewing inside me. Um, and I got the script and I had been offered a lot of the typical movie fare that I just wasn't excited about. It, it didn't make, you know, Andrew Breitbart, our friend, said politics is downstream from culture. And uh, mm -hmm. they just don't, the, the, the conservatives a lot of times make, you know, interesting content, but not anything I feel that can, could be uh, something missing for me. And this script had, it, 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 it just, the structure of it was terrific. The story behind it was terrific. And then I saw what I could do with it. You know, sometimes you read a script and you don't get inspired. This year I got terribly inspired. And I have to say to all three of you, Magda, Annie, and yourself, and also Brian, you know, the vehement conversations we had over the time period that were, and out of that foment of creativity comes, yeah. it, a, a project yeah. always comes better, you know, and we don't get to tell yes. the nuanced aspect of that behind the scenes. And then when you meet with the actors and then you start working with them privately yeah. and then in conjunction with each other, then another thing is born. And if you have to, yes. con it's a, it's a document, totally. it, the, 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 the film, the script is a blueprint and now you have to put flesh and bones. And I had said to you guys early on the movie, which I had liked, one of the films, American Hustle by David O. Russell, mm -hmm. which was yeah. about the FBI sting on Abscam. Now, here we have, which I love the film, the, 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 the tone of that film I just uh, loved. And uh, also uh, The Wolf of Wall Street, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. There were elements of this story and script in everything here. And uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 was excited to take on the undertaking and then of course the uh, uh to flesh out the bones read the beautiful things by hunter biden because i i wanted to make a film not just for conservatives but that the left couldn't look away from you know there's mm -hmm. a there's a there's a thing with, when there's an accident on the freeway everyone slows down and this is like the script explodes onto the screen <laughs> so i don't care who you Very are good. you have to look at this this thing Very good. You know, that's a great analogy, actually, like you have to look at this and, uh, and it's important that people look at this. I, I want to go back to something you said at the beginning, that there's a story brewing in you. I mean, funny, that was the way we were, too. And it's funny, the way we were with our Gosnell movie. I was in the Gosnell courtroom. I was there. I watched the media not cover it. I watched the story, try, the trying to suppress the story. And I remember us sitting here. We, we made documentaries. I did plays and that. I was sitting here and said, somebody's going to make a movie about, out, of, out of the Gosnell story. It's going to be great. And then nothing happened. And I remember so, saying, somebody's going to make a play out of the <laughs> Ferguson drama and tell the truth. And nothing happened. And, and you know, and so they realized, well, that somebody has to be us. How do you make a movie? How do you make a play? Well, you just, you know, you hire professionals. So the story was brewing on us too. And I remember us making the decision back on our patio, on our table. And you, sometimes you see it here in the podcast. Uh, the, the, our back patio uh, and we're just saying there well we're, we're making this movie can't we raise the money for this because we're producers that's what we you know we do a lot of things but that's an important thing and we looked around and he says we think we can actually we think we can because there's a hunger for the truth here and then then we we contacted brian godawa and uh you know it's funny 
you know, I don't know if you know much about Brian's background. I mean, he's he's an evangelical Christian or a Christian, um, and uh, I tell you, it doesn't read like a, you know, if you had a if you had a stereotypical view of Christians, you'd think a Christian couldn't write this script. But actually, Brian understands sin. He understands, uh, you know, and he understands redemption, and he understands all. He understands the human condition, uh, and he understands what what is good and what is not. And uh, he he created this great script. Now we 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 said, you know, this is the kind of story we want to tell. But then he came back with this, as you say, this American hustle style script that you actually, and and, and this is very important. I read the script; I thought it was brilliant, uh, but I read it as a journalist telling the facts and you added so much um i don't know what the word is color but that's a, that's a wrong thing every every scene i thought every scene was great but then you every scene popped when you got involved yeah that's that's the you know after 45 years of working with the best directors best writers yeah. scripts on all levels and then prior to that the training as an actor you know you understand and um i want to you, you you're able to interpret a scene or something that's just black and white on a page, and how do you then give it the yeah. flesh and bones? And that's the mm-hmm. uh, exciting part of it, is to, to bring it alive so it pops into everyone's consciousness, uh, because the emotional aspect of all of that, you have to find it, you have to, you have to, and you never know where it is. You know, sometimes in a scene you, you could, I, I've learned over the years never to predict, and like a lot of actors, I, I wanna, I worked with an actor one time and he said, he wanted to rehearse with me. It was a, a terrific actor. Uh, I won't mm-hmm. mention his name, uh, but yes. he, he, he wanted to rehearse the scene because he had a certain structure in mind how it should go without taking into account what I was playing or how I was going to play a part that he thought in his mind was a cliched kind of character. And um, mm-hmm. uh, it was a thing called Terrorist on Trial, the United States of America versus Salim yes. Ajami. And... Um, there's the it's courtroom drama that Alan Dershowitz was the technical advisor on. And I infused in that. Uh, I said, no, I don't want to rehearse it because I don't want the planned. And it threw him. It threw him because he wanted to. So anyway, to make a long story short, I'm digressing. But the creative process is, is, is exciting. And it's when you get the actors, we have a great cast. Lawrence Fox, the great uh, legacy of his family and, mm-hmm. and himself yeah. as a great actor. Gina Carana and, and John John James and a newcomer Emma Goyevic and uh, mm-hmm. uh, it, it all it, it's a miracle you know it's, it all gelled and <laughs> we're in Serbia yeah it's funny yeah you know yeah and you think even we're in Serbia yeah in Serbia and in Belgrade and even picking the DP I wanted a look a certain look of the picture that was very important to me as you know mm-hmm. from the beginning so the, even the locations if you remember when the locations were coming in I hated yeah. them. I'm going, why, yes, you did. That's right. why are we going to Serbia? If the, and then finally, you know, the stuff started to come in that was doable. And we had a marvelous crew over there, really. Even the yeah. set designers, you know, film, uh, our film of course. looks like, you know, look, at Warner Brothers could put this film out if there was a different CEO of the, of the company. Yeah, you know, that, that is true. I mean, and this is something we always wanted uh, when we were producing movies was... We want our, funny. We want our movies, and this will be for. We want our movies to look like all the other movies. Uh, no, the content's obviously good, but let's be honest. When you look at sometimes Christian movies or conservative movies, you can spot them right away. They're not colorful. They're 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 lit with white light. Uh, there's just a. You can actually almost put them on the TV and within two seconds to say, ah, that's a Christian conservative movie. You could not say that about your movie. No, and that I think that's we want, as you say, we want. If Warner Brothers looked at it and with the sound off, or you know, uh, and didn't know the content, they'd say, "Oh, that's a movie. That's a proper movie." Um, and that that's that's something that you brought to it. Yeah, that's something that has always frustrated me about conservative filmmaking in a certain way. And I understand the constraints and everything else, but there's there's no reason for it. I mean, we had a in all intents and purposes, the film looks a lot more expensive than the budget. And you guys did amazing crowdsourcing, as you said, tapping into the to the frustration and anger of the American people, seeing something be ignored. While the, the Trumps, they, they gave them a colonoscopy, uh, col- col- what do they yeah. call it? Uh, 
a colon exam. Every I don't want to talk. About, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, but it's too traumatic. It's 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 dramatic. But it, but that's what come was come to America. Come to America, get a colonoscopy. That's, colonoscopy. That's that was, thank you. It's that uh, I needed. I could <laughs> say it with an Irish accent. But that's what they were doing to the Trumps. You see. Every yeah. one, every two weeks, there was another colonoscopy, that poor family. Yes. But anyway, yes. and meanwhile, they're burying, they've got the x-rays. There's a, they've got the x-rays for the Bidens, and they go, yeah. there's, wait a minute, there's a thing growing over here, and there's a problem over here. Oh, no, no, we don't want to see that. I don't know if you saw Rudy Giuliani. I, I, I had a terrific interview yes. with Rudy the other day. And as we're speaking, he tells me that when they came to his house, to whatever they do, the FBI, to take things away. Mm. Uh, they, there were two laptops sitting right on the table. And he said to them, uh, don't you want, want these? And they go, uh, what are they? He goes, those are Hunter Biden's laptops. And he said, the FBI went, oh, no, 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 we don't want those. He said they were very respectful and everything else, but how interesting, how interesting. Yeah. And now it, even yeah. Bill Maher, you know, I think this film... Yes is really now bringing around the net, as you said, 3.5 million views in a couple of days of our trailer. Yeah. And people can, you know, you can go to mysonhunter.com, you can prepay for the film and then own it from September 7th on. Uh, and uh, yeah. it's a ride. It's really a tremendous ride with great performances and a, a, a very interesting story. And Breitbart have been amazing. So we're partnering with Breitbart uh, to get the to get the get the the movie out there. They're distributing it. This is a first for them getting into the uh, getting into the movie distribution business. And I mean, it really, it's an amazing. This we're in LA. I don't know if you know we're in LA because we met Andrew Breitbart at a conference in DC, and he, and we first our first night in LA, we screened one of our documentaries at a friend's house up in. Actually, it wasn't a friend. We met him at the same conference. He said, you got to come. Actually, no, we met a, a friend. He says, you got to come to L.A. There's lots of interesting people there. And he brought us over and we screened our documentary at the Palisades. Uh, Andrew Breitbart was there. And I sat in this man's kitchen while this guy called Andrew told me about his plan to set up a website uh, called Big Hollywood and Big Big Media, I think it was at the time. Uh, and uh, uh, how he was going to change the world. And... Uh, I started going, okay. And then he, he inspired us so much. He said, look, come out here, do things. So we, we moved out to LA. And when he came when we came out, he says, how are you getting around? He said, well, we've hired a car until we get sorted. He goes, you need to borrow my wife's, my, my mother-in-law's car, right? He, so Andrew Breitbart lent us a car from his family. So we were driving around in the Breitbart family car for the first six weeks uh, we were in here in LA. So, uh, but anyway, th this is like full circle now because we came here because Andrew Breitbart and now Andrew Breitbart, Breitbart.com, Breitbart News Network are distributing this film. Yes. Well, Andrew, I met him in 2002 on the USS Ronald Reagan. Before the, uh, he was working with the Huffington Post and also with Drudge Report prior. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he was pleased to see that I was, uh, you know, uh, 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 different thinking than the normal Hollywood uh, type. And we became fast friends. And he, of course, shared with me his... Oh, as it grew, his vision for big Hollywood and what he wanted to do and have a place for people like myself, the creative filmmakers, because politics is downstream from culture. So yes. yeah. it was a, uh, so over the years, uh, and I've written for Breitbart's forever, I've had hundreds of articles on their thing. And uh, it was a, I was excited. Uh, and I know as we were going through the distribution process, I had said early on, I think, and you agreed, I said, Breitbart would be the place for this film, I think. Yeah. And uh, I says, it would be great for them to launch their whole idea of creative movies in a, in a, in a, in a, with a certain quality. And, and not just entertaining films, but movies with content that affect the culture, that give the truth mm -hmm. to those that aren't getting it, that, because that's where it starts. That's what the, the left has done so beautifully. And Rand, uh, Andrew's book, right, Righteous Indignation, and and the whatnot. And he was, as you, you said, he gave you his car. Andrew was one of the most generous people as a conservative yes. that I've ever met. And here's yes. what I mean. If he had a contact that could help you, yeah, he wouldn't hesitate. There was no jealousy. No jealousy. There was no jealousy. No jealousy. There was no jealousy. There was no 
territorial aspect to it. If only conservatives would take a lesson from that. Andrew Breitbart, like the one thing I say about Andrew Breitbart is Fox approached Andrew Breitbart and said, we're thinking of setting up a comical late night show. We want someone who's irreverent, conservative, funny. And of course, the obvious person to do that is Andrew Breitbart, right? What did Andrew do? He recommended Greg Gutfeld. I don't know if I'd be that generous. I don't, I wish I would. I, I, I don't wish at all. The, the movement will only grow. You know, and by the way, it's a very conservative thing. Liberals think the pie is only this big. Conservatives are supposed to think that the pie grows exponentially. So why aren't we doing that in our, in our behavior with other... Yeah. It's been my frustration, Philip, for many, many years. As you said, Andrew, I would be in New York. He says, we've got to go meet with Greg Gutfeld. We've got to go meet with this. And, and I was on Fox in 1996 when no one wanted to be on Fox. I had a, 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 I'm telling you, it was a brand new station. And I was doing a TV series for NBC called Profiler. And they said, there's this new station. You know, I did the other shows on, on the other big networks. But this Fox thing, I said, oh, I like that idea. Yeah, I'll do that show. Let me do that show. And I did Fox and Friends. And then over the years, I'd done quite a few Fox shows. And then when Bill Shine was the head of Fox um, mm -hmm. and Roger Ailes was there uh, and Gutfeld, Andrew had recommended, of course, and then Gutfeld, oh, Robert Davi, I love it. And I used to go on Red Eye when no one knew who Greg Gutfeld yeah. was all the time. Tell, tell the people what, what you want them to get out of the movie uh, when, when they see it, or what, what, will, what should they expect? You know, I've, I've been watching a lot of the other bloggers that, wanna, uh, uh, that, that, are, that are on the extreme left, and they mm -hmm. want to define the film a certain way as a propaganda piece. That's right. And That's right. That, that, to me, is, is immediately, it, it's typical of what they do. They, they will accuse no. you of what they're doing themselves. Their article is propaganda against the film without even seeing it yeah. and yeah. not knowing that the underbelly of how I went into beautiful things and took things directly from Hunter and extracted mm -hmm. what I felt the relationships would be and stuff like that, as, as you guys did. And to humanize, it's a father-son relationship couched in this very difficult uh, uh, world uh, of politics and power and intrigue and corruption and uh, the the temptations that I'm sure every single politician goes through. And to ignore that, uh, and also, again, without demonizing the drug addiction, because yeah. families have been held with this, it's a painful thing. The justification for, the justification. You know, I, I, do a bond, I did a Bond film called License to Kill, and everyone yes. goes, he made the most realistic, and you made him feel sympathy for Bond villains. I was known for making the villain feel sympathetic because it's more believable. Whether you yeah. want to, I never commented on the morality of that character. So the same thing with the approach of this. I didn't want to comment on that. That's a Saturday Night Live skit. This is a flesh and blood film that yes. people yes. will really, you know, the moment when Hunter says, I just want to make him proud. Yeah. I just want to make him proud. That's a hard. That's a universal. Universal. That's a universal. Yeah, it's universal. I mean, it's funny if you look at the at the. I mean, the YouTube, the, the Twitter's blowing up. Like, I think we're at four million views now. But if you look at YouTube and other places where people are commenting, the the left go, "Oh, this is just propaganda." They haven't watched it. But then you look at the right, and some on the left go, <laughs> "They're the left go, or they are the other left go. They're really stupid. They've made Hunter look cool, right?" Yeah. That's one of their big things. I can't believe they're making Hunter look cool. Yeah. And then, do they know they're making Hunter look cool? And we're going, look, by the way, for, if you're living in most of America, Hunter Biden had the coolest life on the planet, right? He Money was no object. This is a man who got $83,000 a month of Burisma of a Ukrainian-Russian oil and gas company for doing nothing. He got $3 million from the mayor of Moscow's wife. He was part of a 1.2 billion Chinese investment fund. He had money. He, he had so much money, he didn't know where it was coming from. Literally, one of his statements, I'm not sure what I got that money for, but it was nice to get yeah. it. He was running up. I don't like telling them the room. film. It's all in the movie. It's all dramatized in the film. No, well, well, yes, all, yeah, it's uh, all, that's a fact. Those are, yeah. those are facts. This is the, the lifestyle of Hunter Biden, right? And he had as much drugs, uh, as much. No, if you... Uh, from a debauchery, from a rock and roll lifestyle, 
uh, he had the rock and roll Absolutely. lifestyle. And if you think if you think that's cool, that's fine. But we wanted to show. I think you said it best. A villain is is hard to relate to. A human is easy to relate to, and therefore you see how how they can be corrupted. Exactly. Humans are corruptible. Villains are not. Yes. You know, mustache twirling villains yeah. are not. Humans can slip from p- partying at college to uh, to the rock and roll corrupt corrupt lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's we all we all wanted that, and you've done it brilliantly. Yes, as the actors have. You know, John James yes. brings a, I didn't want, again, there's a very, uh, well, to digress a bit, uh, to, I'll get back to that in a second, but the idea of Hunter Biden being cool. Now, a friend of mine, I won't mention the actor's name, but very substantial known name. He said that, uh, you know, a lot of the people here, this is before, when he knew I did the film, they're going to, mm-hmm. people are going to think Hunter's cool. You know, it's fear and loathing in Las Vegas. It's Hunter Thompson cool. Yes. It's a Hunter S. Thompson cool. It's kind of like that's the lifestyle of a lot of guys that have had breakdowns in Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, so it does have that, you know, but but you say to yourself, is that is that cool? Is that cool or yeah. is that a debauch kind of person that has problems? And where does it lead to at the end of the day? Um so it, it does. Well, have- well, Greg Gutfeld uh, wrote a whole book called "Not Cool" about about, the, about how 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 coolness was ruining America actually, um, and how coolness was in the end destructive. You know. Yes. Uh, it's not, yeah. So, um, well, listen. Uh, remind people where you can see the movie. Uh, Go to mysonhunter.com. It's easier than streaming on Netflix or anywhere else. You pre-order the film. September 7th, and then you can, from September 7th on, download it and own that picture. I showed it today. A worker came to the house. Um, lightning strike, and the outdoor lighting had a problem. So wow. the guy came to look to see if everything was okay, and it was all right. Uh, just some thing he has to come by and fix. He says, hey, I heard about your film. I go, have you seen the trailer? He goes, no. So I showed him the trailer, brought him inside, showed him the trailer. And he, he was just laughing, shaking. He said, oh, my, I have to see this. I mean, this is, this is my kind of movie. This is a young guy, by the way, in his 20s. Yeah. He's a young guy, about 23, 24 years old. And uh, it, it, it wasn't just the political aspect of it, but just the, the feel of the film uh, that he was. And, and I think that as, as people out there get the right message and understand it and know that I think uh, so mysonhunter.com and uh, yeah. support us as filmmakers because that's what you can do. You know, it's yeah. what Anne and Philem and, and Magda have done and what Breibart has done. They've been on the front lines of this taking bullets yeah. uh, for culture and for getting the message out. And in a small way, this is, and we're doing it f- for the public. We're doing it so we can, we can save this nation this nation is at a difficult time. I've never seen it so bad in my decades of 70, 70 years here on this planet. And I've seen yeah. the dissipation and the cultural Marxist revolution undertaking. You just had a New York City governor say, if you don't think like we do, get the hell out of New York. Yeah. And yeah. This, is, this is what's happening in our, in our, in our, in our White House. Yeah. No, this, uh, this is what, by the way, we live in California and we don't feel welcome here anymore. I got out They're in January after 45 years, yeah. Philip. Sad indeed. Sad indeed. So listen, people want to help reverse this, help make a difference. Yes. MySonHunter.com. Thank you, Robert, for coming on the show. Thank you. And uh, we're all very excited for, yes. for next week. Yeah, it's exciting. God bless all of you. Thanks. Okay. Get the film. Support films that have great content, great quality. And there's a big message in the ravioli. <laughs> Thank you. And the other extraordinary thing that happened recently that you probably know is that the trailer was actually premiered on Truth Social and, you know, just went, you know, bananas, as we said, this three and a half million people have watched it at this yeah. point. Um, and we had, you know, and, and Don Jr. was there um, talking about the film, yes. right, Philip? Yeah, let's hear some of Don Jr.'s quotes actually from the launch. You know, the story was out, but they did whatever they could to cover it. And that's... That's part of the problem, and that's why I love that you guys went about doing this. 
because even though the story existed in the ether, uh, social, entertainment, mainstream media, no one would actually cover it because they understood that it would hurt their cause and their narrative. Look at Disney stock. Look at Netflix stock. Uh, look at what's going on. Finally, our people have finally had enough. We're no longer just saying, well, we're going to accept different views while the other side takes your hard-earned money and uses it and weaponizes it against all of your belief systems day in and day out. They've said enough. And now they're looking for alternate venues uh, to spend their hard-earned money. And I think this movie is going to be an a incredible example of that. And even guys like me who've been talking about this stuff for quite some time simply because, you know, I know what they would have done to me. I know what they did to me with nothing, uh, you know, let, let alone with the amount of evidence that there is on the Bidens and the Hunter and the corruption and the money. And there's just nothing to see here, folks. Uh, it's important we're having these conversations. It's important we're acting out and taking an approach. And so I, I think we're creating an entire new economy uh, as we speak with all of the things that are going on. And, you know, this is going to be you know, part of the tip of the spear of that. So I want it to be successful because I want people to understand just how important this is. We're fighting for our values. We're fighting for our country and we're fighting for the future that we want to leave our children. With my five young kids, I want to make sure I leave them in America they recognize. I think the thing that struck me there was, right. you know, if he had done half of what he did, yeah, of what of what or, of what Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden did, that he'd be in jail forever. He'd be, get one of yeah. those long American sentences, five one hundred and fifty six years. Yes, know? yes. So uh, yeah. I mean, different standards. The left doesn't play by the rules. That's why we need to rewrite the rules. That's why you're helping rewrite the rules. That's why we're so grateful that you helped crowdfund this film. And the big thing to do now, man, you know, we sort of said it earlier, like the big thing to do now is buy the film, get the film immediately, go to mysonhunter.com, share this you know, podcast with people, share the link with people, tell people, look, let's do this thing. Um, let's show Hollywood that you know, we, don't, we don't need their permission to make a film about something as important as this. We didn't, if we were waiting on permission from Hollywood, uh, they were never going to make this film. Now Hollywood has decided back in the day, Hollywood, you know, had people from all shades of, of the political spectrum. Now it's very focused, very woke, only leftist content is getting produced. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're saying, yeah, we did, but you know what? We don't need your permission. We're going ahead. Like, just like we did with Gosnell, we didn't need your permission. You were never going to make a movie about, America's biggest serial killer. You were never going to make a podcast about America's biggest serial killer, but we've done both. This is what we do. We do these untold stories and this is a massively untold story. Yeah. This was a suppressed story. The yes. New York Post, you know, were, did some stellar journalism. You know, they had the laptop and, and, and guess what happened? Twitter shut that down. Facebook shut that down. They closed that story down. I mean, let's listen to a little bit of what Zuckerberg just said, by the way, about the Hunter Biden story. How do you guys handle things when they're a, a big news item that's controversial? Like there was a lot of attention on Twitter during the election because of the Hunter Biden laptop story. The New yeah, York we Post. Have that too. Yeah, so you guys censored that as well? If something was reported to us as potentially... Um, misinformation, important misinformation. We we also have this third party fact checking program because we don't want to be deciding what's true and false. And for the, I think it was five or seven days when it was basically being um, being determined whether it was false. Um, the distribution on Facebook was decreased, but people were still allowed to share it. So you could still share it. You could still consume it. So when you um, say the distribution has decreased, in, it, it got shared. It, how does that work? It basically the ranking in newsfeed was a little bit less, so fewer people saw it than would have otherwise. So it definitely by what percentage? I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's 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 meaningful. But I mean, but basically, a um... Zuckerberg's a bit unclear there whether the FBI said you know this is American disinformation, but. They didn't come out when all the establishments were saying this is American disinformation. They didn't come out and say this is not this. Is, they 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 created this atmosphere where there was this Ro Russia collusion hoax and uh, uh, allowed this to permeate and for people and former members of the FBI, by the way, to make these false allegations and gain credible. They use the FBI's name. So uh, and talk and talking and by the way, just talking about Facebook. I didn't say this to you earlier, Philip. Whether we would talk about this today, but I just wanted to bring it to everyone's notice. Anyone who's noticed that I'm missing, that Anne McElhenney is missing on Facebook. Um, 
I put up a photograph when we were in Serbia. I put up a photograph that was um, a, a photograph of Hunter Biden that's out there in the world of him in his underwear, basically with a red scarf around his neck. It's a famous photograph. It's, it's everywhere. And I had beside that a photograph of our actor, Lawrence Fox, wearing the same outfit. And I put them up. Both men are, are clothed. You know, they're I mean, they're more clothed than a lot of people you'll see on the interwebs, as they say. Yeah. And uh, I was flagged for inappropriate and uh, sex, sexual exploitation of an adult, apparently. Um, you know, which is a, a kind of an extraordinary thing. Then, you know, I kept get, getting these warnings and warnings. And we're going to put up a few of those warnings up on the, on the screen. You'll see what they look like. I kept getting those. And then I was still able to kind of operate. I was still able to post things. And then out of the blue, just out of the blue, I have been unable to post anything since the 4th of July. And actually, the thing that I posted on the 4th of July, we could actually listen to a little tiny piece of that. It's um, just a beautiful rendition of... Um, of the American anthem, by the way. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her to the night with the light from above. That, yeah. And that was it. They, that was me. That's a hate I was. Crime. That's a hate that's crime. Hate crime. I was done. That was. It was finished. We're going to wrap up right now because, as I said, we're, there's a lot. There's an awful lot of moving parts going yes. on here. I know I haven't cooked for anyone recently. Um, no, but tell I have. Tell cooked, us about your air fryer. But I, I'm loving the air fryer, and I would say to you just two things about the air fryer that I did this weekend. And I know I have no photographs, and I'm very sorry. But honestly, somebody had written to me and said, "Don't get rid of the instant pot because it's great for for um, for." Um, baked potato and i thought you know what i should try baked potato in the in the in the air, air fryer. fryer and guess what Beautiful. here's what you do prick 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 and then oil in the air fryer 40 minutes at 400 unbelievable really crispy skin really really flowery on the inside second thing i did this weekend which you had last night Phil, which you really liked and i didn't take photographs yeah. it was very dark we were working all weekend was those chili rellejos those big chilies those big green ones i don't even know if i'm saying the right name of them and you open them up put in um, cream cheese and then just wrap that, wrap that up in bacon and put that in the air fryer. Oh, Amazing. God, how good was that? Instant hot, instant best kind of fast food. Anyway, listen, thank you, everyone. Next week is very, we're even more excited than we are already. It's hard even to believe how we could possibly be more excited than we already are. Thank you, thank you, thank you from our beautiful supporters and friends. And you all feel like yes. friends to us, by the way. You really do. This is a family. This feels like family. Um, we're so, so grateful to you. Um, God bless. And uh, we'll be chatting to you soon. Bye. Bye. MySonHunter.com.